Is it okay to comfort your dog when they're afraid? Aren't we going to reinforce the fear and that'll make them worse in the long run? To understand why we can't reinforce fear, we first need to answer a really important question. What is reinforcement? There are two situations where reinforcement happens. Goal-directed actions and habits. I'm only gonna talk about goal-directed action because that's mostly what we're talking about when it comes to dog training. Now, just like it says on the tin, Goal-directed actions happen to achieve a goal. That goal is either to take advantage of an opportunity or to mitigate some sort of risk. In order to achieve that goal, the dog does an action, and that action could be barking, biting, licking, running, humping, even things like continuing to carry on walking or continuing to lay on their bed. Those could all be goal-directed actions. And, any one of these behaviours could have been selected, but the brain calculated that this one will probably address the situation best. That action then produces an outcome. The brain checks what it predicted was going to happen against what actually happened. So the brain asks itself, did doing that particular action move me towards the goal? Did it move me towards the good thing or away from the bad thing? If the answer is yes, then the brain recognises that there is a meaningful relationship between these two events. There is an association. That's why we call it associative learning. And so it's not actually the behaviour that gets reinforced, it's the association that gets reinforced. In doing that, the value of the outcome gets attributed to that action in that context. In practice, it means that the next time that the brain encounters a similar situation, the threshold for selecting that particular action is lowered. So that action is more likely to occur in the future. And the crucial part in all of this, these associations form with a behavior. Fear is not a behavior. Well, why do we care? Isn't this just nitpicking words? No, but to understand why, we first need to understand what is fear? And more importantly, is it okay to comfort my dog during a thunderstorm? Fear is an emotion. A big part of emotions is the physiological responses that happen in the body. Things like the heart racing, pupils dilating, increase in blood pressure, freezing, trembling. All of those physiological processes and the cues from the context that the individual finds themselves in, those things help tell the dog's brain that they are experiencing fear. And these physiological responses happen as a reflexive byproduct of being exposed to things like sudden, unpredictable, loud noises. The dog didn't need to learn to do those responses. That reflex has been with them since before they were born. These physiological changes are called an unconditioned response, and the things that elicit those responses are called unconditioned stimuli. But you may have noticed that your dog starts to show all of these outward signs of fear well before something bad happens. They're anticipating that something bad is gonna happen even if they're not in danger right now. They learn that through a process called classical conditioning. Now, at some point, your dog may have learnt that there is a meaningful relationship between things like air pressure, the smell of a storm, flashes of lightning, and then those startling loud claps of thunder that unpredictably seem to come out of nowhere. Now, on their own, things like air pressure have absolutely no meaning to your dog whatsoever. If we took a newborn puppy and exposed them to a change in barometric pressure, then the pup's behaviour probably wouldn't change. That information is meaningless. But when that change in air pressure happens just before that loud clap of thunder that then makes the dog startle from fear, suddenly that change in air pressure has a whole new meaning. That change in air pressure predicts danger. The brain has formed an association between the thunder and the stimuli that predict that event. Those stimuli have become conditioned to mean something. Their meaning? they predict that that loud sound is going to arrive. There is an association that has formed between these two stimuli. 
So when the pup experiences those stimuli in the future, even if there's no actual thunder happening, the dog's physiology responds as if there was some sort of threat. This is called a conditioned response. And guess what this conditioned response entails? All of those physiological responses of fear that we were speaking about earlier. Freezing, trembling, heart racing, pupils dilating, blood pressure increasing. Those cues that tell us that a storm is coming have produced a fear response even when the dog is not in any real danger. So can we reinforce fear? I'm gonna cut to the chase. It is biologically impossible to reinforce fear. Firstly, the association that is learned in classical conditioning is not at the point of fear. That fear response is not a part of the learned association. The brain forms the association between the scary event and the cues that predict them. The condition response is simply a reflexive byproduct. What this means is that the fear response is an automatic response that the dog has absolutely no control over. The dog cannot choose how fast its heart beats or how wide its pupils are. They have about as much control over those things as you have cognitive control over your liver. So what happens from here? Where do those goal-directed behaviours like barking and hiding under the couch come from? Well, if we think about the earlier example where we discussed reinforcement, you'll remember that the cues in the environment tells the dog's brain that there is either an opportunity or there's a danger. The action then functions to make the most of that situation. The brain selects the behaviour that will probably lead to the best outcome. And in the case of a threat, the dog is going to select defensive behaviours like running away or hiding. Or if the brain calculates that the best defence is actually a good offence, then they might be more likely to do active coping strategies like barking. And so long as the dog is safe at the end of all of this, their brain will code that situation as if it was their barking that caused them to be safe. The association between barking and safety will be reinforced. Yes, even if the barking does not prevent that thunder or make it go away, that behaviour can still be reinforced because the consequence of barking was safety. From the brain's perspective, the barking functioned to keep them safe in the face of danger and the cues that predicted them. So what would happen if we comforted that dog? Let's draw it out and take a look. Now, let's assume that the comfort that you are giving your dog is genuinely comforting. That comforting would function as an unconditioned stimulus. That unconditioned stimulus would have to produce a calming effect on the dog's physiology and their nervous system. The stronger that change in physiological response, the more powerful that intervention could possibly be. And what's really cool is that this appetitive system directly opposes the system that is responsible for all of those unpleasant feelings that the storm caused. Imagine them a little bit like a seesaw. Both sides can't go up at the same time. What this means is that if the pleasantness of your comforting genuinely outweighs the unpleasantness of the storm, then the outcome that the body will produce will be one of relaxation, not fear. And so if the human's presence functions as a safety signal, that changes the meaning of the context. The situation isn't dangerous, so there's no need to bark. And if the storm stimuli no longer predict danger, then just like the seesaw, that comforting will counter condition the meaning of those stimuli. The brain will learn that a change in barometric pressure and that distinct smell doesn't signal danger. Instead, it signals that pleasant things are about to happen. That new association prevents the activation of the fear response. And when you see it all drawn out like this, you can see that there is literally no way for reinforcement, which is all the way up here, to affect fear. They're two completely different systems. And although these things are running in parallel, they're different brain circuits. So the moral of the story, comfort your dog, they need you.